Good morning. Last week, yet again, Labour peers in the House of Lords contrived to stop the safety of Rwanda Bill. For almost two years, our opponents have used every trick in the book to block flights and keep the boats coming. But these flights are going to Rwanda. We are going to deliver this indispensable deterrent so that we finally break the business model of the criminal gangs and save lives. Starting from the moment that the bill passes, we will begin the process of removing those identified for the first flight. We have prepared for this moment. To detain people while we prepare to remove them, we've increased detention spaces to 2,200. To quickly process claims, we've got 200 trained, dedicated caseworkers ready and waiting. To deal with any legal cases quickly and decisively, the judiciary have made available 25 courtrooms and identified 150 judges who could provide over 5,000 sitting days. The Strasbourg Court have amended their Rule 39 procedures in line with the test set out in our Illegal Migration Act. And we've put beyond all doubt that ministers can disregard these injunctions <coughs> with clear guidance that if they decide to do so, civil servants must deliver that instruction. And most importantly, once the processing is complete, we will physically remove people. <laughs> and to do that, I can confirm that we've put an airfield on standby, booked commercial charter planes for specific slots, and we have 500 highly trained individuals ready to escort illegal migrants all the way to Rwanda, with 300 more trained in the coming weeks. This is one of the most complex operational endeavours the Home Office has carried out. But we are ready. Plans are in place. And these flights will go come what may. No foreign court will stop us from getting flights off. Rwanda is ready too. And I'd like to thank the government of Rwanda for their work in strengthening their asylum system, passing legislation and setting up a new appeals tribunal. The next few weeks will be about action. But whilst I'm conscious People want deeds, not words. I'm not going to outline now exactly what will happen when. And there are good operational reasons for this. There is a loud minority who will do anything to disrupt our plan. So we will not be giving away sensitive operational detail which could hinder all the progress made to date. Teams across government need to be able to get on and deliver without interference. They are working flat out to deliver this genuine game changer. The first flight will leave in 10 to 12 weeks. Now, of course, that is later than we wanted, but we have always been clear that processing will take time. And if Labour peers had not spent weeks holding up the bill in the House of Lords to try to block these flights altogether, we would have begun this process weeks ago. And the success of this deterrent doesn't rest on one flight alone. It rests on the relentless, continual process of successfully and permanently removing people to Rwanda with a regular rhythm of multiple flights every month over the summer and beyond until the boats are stopped. Now, I know there are some who will hear all of this and accuse me of lacking compassion, but the truth is the opposite. We are in a battle with callous, sophisticated and global criminal gangs who care nothing for the lives they risk in unseaworthy dinghies. Nine people have died already attempting to cross the channel just this year, including a seven-year-old girl. That's why we've secured the largest ever deal with France to strengthen interceptions on the French coastline. And because a third of all arrivals were coming from Albania, we struck a deal that reduced illegal Albanian migrants by 90%. Taken together with doubling illegal working raids and returning 150 hotels back to our local communities, we got the number of small boat arrivals last year down by more than a third. The first time they had fallen since this phenomenon began, and at a time when European countries were seeing numbers rise exponentially. But these sophisticated gangs are changing tactics once again as well as piling twice as many people into small dinghies and increasing violence against French police. They have shifted their attention towards vulnerable Vietnamese migrants. 
Vietnamese arrivals have increased tenfold and account for almost all the increase in small boat numbers we have seen this year. And just as we succeeded in reducing Albanian arrivals dramatically, so I'm confident we will do the same when it comes to the Vietnamese. President Macron and I have agreed to work with European partners on closing loopholes to enter Europe in the first place. The Home Office have signed a joint statement with the Vietnamese government committing to deepen our already very strong migration relationship. And just last week, officials from the government of Vietnam were at Western Jetfoil and Manston to observe border force operations on the front line as they continue to manage small boat arrivals. But we can't keep reacting to the changing tactics of these gangs. The truth is, we need innovative solutions to address what is a global migration crisis, to disrupt the business model of people smuggling gangs and save lives. And that means a systematic deterrent. The only way to stop the boats is to eliminate the incentive to come by making it clear that if you arrive here illegally, you will not be able to stay. And this policy does exactly that. And be in no doubt about the choice that the country will face later this year. The Labour Party have no plan. They would have no treaty, no bill and no flights to Rwanda. They are resigned to the idea that you will never fully solve this problem. Their priority is not stopping the boats, but stopping the planes removing people who have no right to be here. And that would achieve only one thing. It would send a message to the criminal gangs that they can continue their deplorable illegal trade in people. And my policy is different. I believe it should be this country and your government who decides who comes here, not criminal gangs. And I have a plan to deliver it. So we will start the flights and we will stop the boats. Thank you. Right, we turn some questions from the media. Can I uh, start with the eye, please? Um, thank you, Prime Minister. Um, how many people do you expect will be on these flights by, say, the end of the autumn? You say there's going to be a regular rhythm of, uh, of flights starting in July. Um, how regular, how many people each month? Thanks, Hugo. Now, as I said, I know there'll be lots of interest in the exact operational detail of what we're about to embark on. And I've tried very hard in my statement to give everyone a sense of the preparation work that's gone into this. And as much as I am able to say about the future, and that's for a very good reason, like, it's clear that there is a loud minority of people who will do absolutely anything and everything to disrupt this policy from succeeding. You only have to look at what's been going on in Parliament over the past few weeks and months with the Labour Party at every turn blocking progress on this bill. You saw that last week. You will see it again today. And that's why I'm not going to get into exact detail about what exactly is going to happen when and where, because that will just give people more opportunities to try and frustrate the process. But what I can tell you is that an enormous amount of prep work has gone on. We've trained 200 of our best caseworkers. We've increased attention capacity to hold people. We've identified specific dozens of courtrooms, made available the right judges, put an airfield on standby, and crucially booked planes, commercial charter planes for the first flights, trained 500 escorts, and made sure that everything on the Rwandan end is ready for people to be received. Uh, but what I will say is this is not just about one flight. Right? This is about a regular rhythm multiple flights a month through the summer and beyond, because that's how you build a sustainable deterrent. Right? The first flight in 10 to 12 weeks, and I said later than we would have liked, but you can see the delays that we've been subject to thanks to the Labour Party. But it's not just about that one flight. It's about putting a system in place, and that's what we've done, that will ensure the successful delivery of multiple flights a month through the summer and beyond until the boats have stopped. You know, that's what we're determined to deliver, and that's what our plans will deliver. Next, we go to The Times. Uh, good morning, Prime Minister. Thank you. Aubrey Allegretti from The Times. Um, if you do manage to start the flights to Rwanda, does that mean that the UK won't need to leave the ECHR? So I'm confident that we are acting in a way that's completely compliant with all our international obligations, and we work very hard to deliver that. 
Uh, but what I'd say is we are a reasonable people trying to do a reasonable thing. And my patience, like the patience of the British people, is worn pretty thin uh, at this point. And we're going to deliver this policy. And we've now not just worked very hard to do it in a compliant way. Parliament has also certified that, or will certify when this bill is passed, that Rwanda is safe. We've addressed all the concerns that have been raised with us from the Supreme Court and others. So at this point, now's the time for the flights to go. And I'm not going to let a foreign court, given all of that, block us from getting flights up and this deterrent up and running. You know, the bill contains a very specific power that makes it clear that it's for ministers to decide whether to comply with temporary Rule 39 uh, orders. Now, we wouldn't have put that power in there unless I was prepared to use it. But what we have also done is amended the guidance for civil servants that make it crystal clear that if ministers do make that decision, that civil servants will implement that decision. So I think everyone can be pretty clear about my intentions. And then the last thing I would say is that look, if it ever comes to a choice between our national security securing our borders and membership of a foreign court, <coughs> I'm, of course, always going to prioritise our national security. That's the right thing for the British Prime Minister to do, and that's what I would do. Next, uh, can we go to the Express? Thank you, Prime Minister. Steph Spire from the Daily Express. You've said repeatedly that this policy will stop the votes. Does that mean you will rule out a summer general election to give it more time to work before going to voters? And then, if I may very quickly, do you have confidence in the Met Police Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley? So, on, uh, look, I've, I've said what I've said about an election multiple times before my working on working with assumption is for an election in the second half of the year. We remain, uh, that remains the case. And also, as I said, everything I've said on the timing of this uh, is as I've said. Now, you talked about deterrent, though. And I think that is important because, as I said, this is not just about one flight. It's about multiple flights. That's how you build a deterrent. That's what our preparatory work has been designed to deliver. But also, I believe in deterrence. The National Crime Agency has made it clear that you need deterrence. And we've seen the success of deterrence, whether that's in Australia with their programme, but also here and how we dealt with illegal migrants from Albania. They accounted for a third of illegal migrants coming in boats before I got this job. Uh, we put in place a new deal with Albania. We returned thousands of illegal migrants back to Albania last year. And that's why the numbers coming from Albania declined by over 90%. Right, so that shows you that deterrence works. When people know that if they come here illegally, they won't be able to stay, then they stop coming. Right? It's not worth their while. We break the model of the criminal gangs. So I have high confidence that deterrence uh, works. Uh, we've done it here with Albanians. It's worked internationally. And that's why getting the Rwanda policy up and running is so important. Um, and look, I, on the Met, please, I, you know, I, I share the shock and the anger that many are feeling when they saw the clips um, over the weekend. And, you know, what I would say about Mark Rowley and the police, they do have a, a difficult job. Of course, I appreciate that. But what happened was clearly wrong. And it's right that they've apologised for that. And yes, I do have confidence in him. But that's on the basis that he works to rebuild the confidence and trust of not just the Jewish community, but the wider public, particularly people in London, but more broadly. And you regain that trust and, their, and that confidence by making it clear that the police are not tolerating behaviour that we would all collectively deem unacceptable when we see it, because it undermines our values. Uh, and I think that is critical. And I know the Home Secretary uh, will be meeting the Commissioner later today. Next, if we go to GB News. Olivia Rutley, GB News. This was supposed to be emergency legislation, but it's been five months and it's still not over the line. Is the House of Lords fit for purpose? Uh, you know, you talk about emergency legislation. We have worked at pace to deliver because I know and I believe that this is an incredibly important issue for the country. All right, people's patience has run out as is mine, right? They're fed up with the endless, whether it's legal merry-go-rounds, legislative merry-go-rounds, tired of this people trying to block this policy. And that's why when we got the judgment last year, and I, I think I stood here and spoke to you all uh, when we had the judgment last year, I said, look, we disagree with it, but we respected it and we worked rapidly to rectify it. Within a matter of weeks, you know, James and the team, we had negotiated a new treaty with Rwanda to address all the concerns, and we brought forward new legislation, right? So that's how we 
responded. As I said, in a matter of weeks, we had all the uh, mitigations ready to implement this policy. But here, look, I'm talking to you now, and it's April. Why? Because Labour peers in the House of Lords have repeatedly voted against and blocked this bill. That happened just last week. Again, it will happen again today. Um, and I think it's crystal clear that the country believes this is a priority. I've been clear from the first day that I got this job that it's a priority for me to stop the boats. Uh, and that's why I'm talking to you today about all the prep work that has gone in behind the scenes and why I'm confident about our delivery going forward. And, and I think, you know, all the team are here and we chaired the first meeting this morning um, of the Illegal Migration Operations Committee. Home Secretary stood up uh, a gold command operation at the Home Office to deliver this. You know, this is an incredibly complex operation and I want people to be reassured that whilst the Lords have been taking their time to, to continually block this policy, we have been getting on working hard to prepare to implement it. And that's what we discussed this morning, as I gave a hint of earlier in answer to a previous question. It is a complex process, but we have been doing everything you would expect us to do to be ready for this moment. Training case workers, building detention capacity, getting the judiciary and the courtrooms ready, training escorts, getting charter planes booked, getting an airfield ready, um, getting the guidance uh, changed, working with the Rwandans as the Deputy Foreign Secretary has done brilliantly to make sure they are ready with their people all trained uh, at their end, accommodation ready, asylum systems ready over there. You know, this is an enormously complex operation. We've been working very hard to deliver it. But as I said, people's patience has run thin. My patience has run thin. We want to get this done and we want to get these planes off. Uh, next, uh, Sky News. Oh, thank you. Um, Prime Minister, you hope to get the flights finally away in the summer. You state your reputation on this policy. Is this a moment of success for you when that bill passes? And do you have to remove thousands of asylum seekers before a general election to close the gap in the polls and regain voters' trust? Success is when the boats have been stopped. Right? That's what... That's what the country expects. That's what the government and I are committed to delivering. And, you know, yes, whilst 10 to 12 weeks from now is later than we wanted, as I've been talking about, you know, the, the delay for that is crystal clear and obvious to everybody. You have Labour peers blocking this time and time again, again last week, again today. But we've been preparing. And I won't rehash all the things that we've been doing. You know, we've been preparing, we're ready, and we will implement this policy. And, and what I'd say is I think people can have some confidence about my commitment to deliver this because of our record to date, right? And I remember when I got this job, there seemed to be this general sense that no one could do anything about this. Like, this is just something we had to live with. It was just a fact of modern life. The numbers had gone up every year, doubled, quadrupled over the past few years before I got this job. And I didn't think that was right because this is fundamentally wrong. It's fundamentally unfair that people jump the queue undermine our sense of fairness uh, and come here illegally, put pressure on services, and, by the way, risk their lives and are exploited by criminal gangs in the process. None of that is right. And I do think we can do something about it. And I think our record since I became PM is one where we can make a difference. You know, I, we got the numbers down by 36% last year for the first ever time, right? For the first ever time, the numbers were down, they were up in Europe. We are now on track to return 150 hotels back to local communities, right? That is fantastic. Communities across the country had seen their local hotel taken over to house illegal migrants. 150 of those return back to their local communities. We've arrested something, almost a thousand people connected with this trade, right? And there's something like over, over you know, three or four hundred years worth of jail sentences for those that have already been convicted. We shut down 7,000 bank accounts. We've arrested thousands of people on illegal working raids. Uh, so look, all of that, the asylum backlog, which I said we would clear, we cleared it. We tripled the productivity of our caseworkers. We doubled the number that we hired. We processed more people last year than in the last two decades, right? So all of that should give people confidence that you can do something about this issue. Right? If you put your mind to it, you're prepared to go through all this detail and be bold when it comes to solutions like Rwanda, you can get a grip of this problem. Right? We're not there yet by any means, right? like, but the plan is working. Last year showed, and all those numbers I just gave you, show that the plan is working, but we've got to finish the job. 
right? We can't, as you saw this year, we've got this increase in Vietnamese. That's the new issue. Last year it was Albanians, or year before it was Albanians. We dealt with the Albanians. We will deal with illegal migrants from Vietnam. But we can't keep playing this whack-a-mole strategy, dealing with it in a piecemeal fashion. You need a systematic deterrent. That's why the Rwanda scheme is so important. That's why the team is they're all here because they've all been working very hard across government to get this up and running. It's not just about me. This is about the government collectively delivering for the British people on an issue that they care about. And as I said the contrast when that election comes, and I would go over this election thing all over again, other than to say that there's a clear contrast to that election, right? We are a party, we are a government that cares about this issue because it's wrong. We fundamentally think illegal migration is wrong, it's unfair, it's dangerous, and the government is going to do something about it. We have a clear plan to do something about it. Yes, it's novel, I get that. Yes, it's radical, but that's what this situation demands, right? And our track record shows that we can deliver, and in spite of everyone trying to block us, the Labour Party at the front of that queue, right, we will get this done, and that is a choice at the next election. If you care about this issue and you want something done about it, then it's really only one party that's going to deliver that for you, because the Labour Party can't tell you at all what they would do about this issue. And worse than that, they have actively tried to frustrate us at every turn. I talked earlier about the 900 people that we've arrested, right, with the powers that we've passed. The Labour Party voted against that. Right? There's a very tangible difference. Right? Those are new powers that a Conservative government passed that have now led to the arrest of almost 1,000 people sentenced to almost 500 years' worth of jail time. The Labour Party didn't just kind of act, you know, sit back. They literally voted against that. And that is helping us bring these numbers down and tackle this trade and save people's lives. And if it was up to them, all those people would be out on the streets continuing to apply this awful trade. All right? So that's the contrast when that general election comes. Right, next, Talk TV. Peter Cardwell, Talk TV. The Rwandan president, Paul Kagame, you met him recently. He has said that money could be returned if this scheme doesn't work. We know the Boisa housing development, 70% of that housing development has been sold. It was originally meant to be from people who were sent to Rwanda. You've talked about the preparation a lot on the UK side. You've talked a little bit about the Rwandan side. How confident are you that even though the migrants might be on board, that the Rwandans still are? Yeah, so I met uh, President Kakami just the other week when he was in London. We have a very good, close relationship, and we're very lucky. Our Deputy Foreign Secretary, Andrew, has a very long-standing relationship with uh, the Rwandans and the Rwandan government and has been crucial in making sure that we work well together. But to your point, Peter, that they're doing absolutely everything that is required to make sure that this scheme is successful. Just to give you a sense of that, they've got initial reception accommodation centres ready, uh, Hope Hostel being the first one, and longer-term accommodation beyond that that will provide accommodation for thousands. The Home Office have now helped to train, I think at last count, 69 different uh, Rwandan asylum decision-makers. There are almost 40 Rwandan lawyers that are ready to provide extra legal assistance. Judges have also been trained. The co-presidents of the new appeal body in the treaty uh, have already been selected, and the Joint Monitoring Committee has already been set up. So thanks to you know, Andrew and the Home Office's work, I think we're in very good shape, actually, and Paul is completely committed to making this partnership work. Whenever we've needed something from them, when we've had to address concerns that have been raised by our courts, they've been willing to work with us. We've done it constructively and collaboratively. And I think the question you should ask, and you know, Andrew spoke to this this morning, is you know, why? Why? Because Rwanda cares about tackling this issue, right? It has proudly already hosts more than 135,000 people seeking safety. They're as passionate as we are about ending this awful global illegal migration crisis. They've got a proud track record working with the UN for Libyan refugees, for example. And this is an opportunity for us to strengthen not just our economic relationship with them, but work together with them to help do something that many other countries, by the way, are looking at as a potential model. And many European countries, and I speak to lots of European leaders, all of them, right, know that illegal migration is a growing challenge. It's a global challenge. And together with Rwanda, we are on the forefront of demonstrating a new way to deal with this. Uh, and that's the, uh, I think that is something that people have set up and taken notice of. The Rwandas, like us, are, are keen to make sure it's a success. And as I said, European countries are looking at this. And, we'll, and I will say this here, I've said it in the past, you've seen the narrative on this change from the first time I spoke to you all when I got this job. I said then that others where we lead, others will follow. You have seen that, right? 
European countries all talking about third country partnerships and that being one of the tools that you need to resolve this. This is novel, this is innovative, but it will be a game changer. And I'm grateful to the Rwandans and Andrew's work in particular in making sure they're absolutely ready to successfully implement uh, the um, uh, the policy. And the last thing I would say, it's a really long answer, is the treaty, which we work very hard with, uh, will be ratified, as we said, um, in the days right after the bill receives royal assent. That is all on track and, and that is ready, uh, ready to go as well. And it's the treaty that deals with all the concerns that were raised by the Supreme Court, uh, uh, the monitoring committee, the extra set of judges, all of that, which uh, Victoria can go through in detail. Um, but all of that is done and ready to be ratified uh, as soon as the bill passes. Uh, and lastly, could we go to the BBC? Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, Chris Mason from uh, BBC News. You're acknowledging explicitly today that your initial promise to get uh, flights off to Rwanda this spring isn't going to happen. So there will be a scepticism about your capacity to deliver. Can you be certain that by the time of the general election you'll be able to prove that this policy is a deterrent? Thanks, Chris. Look, I'm not going to get into the timing of the general election again. I'll just refer to what I said previously. Um, but what I would say is that we expect the first flight to go in 10 to 12 weeks. Of course, that's later than we wanted, but we know the reason for that. It's that the Labour Party has consistently and at every turn blocked and opposed this bill going through Parliament. That happened again last week. It will happen again today, after we moved very quickly last year to bring forward this bill and a new treaty to make it clear that Rwanda is safe. Now, also, though, it's important that we do this properly. Right. There are going to be people, as we've seen at every turn, who try and oppose us and undermine us. And that's why we should prepare and implement this thoroughly. For example, we want to make sure that the quality of the decision making is absolutely great. Because in the past, people have raised concerns with that and used that as an excuse to frustrate the policy. That's why it's important that we've trained people and we take the time to make those decisions uh, very rigorously. But also, as I said, this isn't just about one flight, right? No. Yeah, could you rush and get one flight off? Maybe you could, but that's not the priority here. The priority is being able to deliver a regular rhythm, a drumbeat of multiple flights a month over the summer and beyond, because that's how you build a systematic deterrent and that's how you will stop the boats. And that is a system that the team and I have worked very hard to put in place. And it's important that we take the time to get that right, to build the deterrent that we all want to see to stop the boats. And lastly, as I've said previously, uh, when people say, can people have confidence and trust? You know, I'll just point you to what we've already achieved. Last year, for the first time, the number of small boat crossings down by 36%, 150 hotels being returned back to local communities in just a few weeks' time, thousands of people uh, arrested, more raids, the backlog getting cleared, and all the preparation work that I've given you a sense of today should give people the confidence that we are ready, plans are in place, these planes will go. You know, that's why I said we would deliver, and that's what we will deliver. Good. Thank you very much.